We've got to talk to people. People, the first thing they hear from it, the first thing they will hear from HR is there's a union here. You don't have to join it. Mm -hmm. Period. The end. All right. There's 50 bucks I'll keep in my pocket. But if their coworker comes to them early on, you know, hey, I'm John. I'm glad you're working here. I want to talk to you about the union, what we do here, and why we think it's important for you to get involved. We've got a meeting next week, and then there's an action next month about, uh, you know, the rising cost of health care. People get involved when there's something to get involved in. We have to take the labor movement out of the grievance process and, and that kind of stuff and make it about the people again. Generally speaking, from my perspective as a school board member, one of the biggest issues, or if not the biggest issue at this time, is affordable housing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, unfortunately, as one public agency, we can't fix it, right? We have to work regionally to really uh, focus on tactics and strategies that we can use to help bring more affordable housing. And the reason is that that our workers, um, particularly members of this union, are our essential workers for our high school district. Without you, we cannot run schools. So whether you're the face of the school, um, when someone enters the, the building, whether you're helping maintain the school facilities, whether you're helping drive our students to and from places, sometimes you're our students' best friends. We have heard that from a lot of kids. Um, and that's important to us. So we want to make sure that you're able to live here. So I, I, I was taught this by some sage uh, mentors of mine. Management has a union. You know what it's called? Management. Right? They support each other's decisions no matter what. They back each other up. These count, these industrial councils that spend billions of dollars lobbying, millions of, I'm sorry, they spend millions to make billions. They have fees. Everyone has to pay to be a part. Guess what? If you don't pay your fee as a part of the Petroleum Institute, you don't get a seat at the table at the Petroleum Institute. Your issues, ABC Petroleum Company, don't get talked about when the Petroleum Institute goes to lobby. But again, apparently we, we're supposed to be just lobbying organizations, but apparently those same rules aren't supposed to apply to us if they want to impose them. I don't know what's going to happen with this court case in Washington, D.C., but when they, if they do that, they better watch out for the consequences, because if you can say you don't have to pay for your union dues, what about taxes to pay for all kinds of crazy stuff that we don't want. Can we say I don't want? I'm going to hold. I'm going to hold back my taxes. It's a it's a constitutional First Amendment right. If you're going to say that you can you can't require people to be members of or pay for their fair share of the union, well, why why couldn't I say I'm going to withhold some of my taxes because I don't want to pay for that stuff over there? Like, <laughs> so we're going to have to fight to make sure that unions are strong once again. And I always remember this, I, when I was mayor of San Mateo, and just to kind of share with you a, a story where I hope a lot of elected officials are today, but as the, when I was the mayor, we would have our labor negotiations. And so you would have a, a professional negotiator, or we had, in our case, the assistant city manager in San Mateo, was negotiating the contract. So he would negotiate a contract, and work with everyone, and then he would report back to us. And I would say, okay, that's good, but he's one side of the coin only. So I said, you know, what I'd like to do is, because we had a little problem, we were at almost an impasse. I said, why don't we do this? We'll have our, our open session, and in, rather than going into closed session, I would like the labor, the bargaining unit that we were having concerns with, I would like them to come to our meeting at our table in the, in the conference room and have them tell us what's on their mind, what the problem was and the challenge was. And after that, it seemed to all come together because I couldn't understand what the problem was, but I got it after that. So those are the little things that can happen in 
the relationships that, to me, showed me just how one important you are, and how important your voices are, and unfiltered. Because when we hear it from other sides or other people, it's not necessarily the way it is. Labor was stronger before the Abu decision. Why? Because we went out and we talked about what we do, how we do it, when we do it, and people understood what the union was. People were a union member when they were not only at work, in the yard, in the office, in their truck driving around. They were union members when they went shopping. They were union members when they voted. They were union members when they went to church, and that's what we need to get back to. And we're only going to do that by communicating better about what we do, talking about the victories that we have, whether it's a contract a victory that we have, whether we win a grievance, or whether we stand up to a boss and we walk in and we say, you know what, that's not okay, we're not going to put, we're not going to put up with that any longer. A march on the boss is what it's kind of called in, in industry speak. We need to get back of doing those types of things to empower you as the union member.